Great committee, as well as the House Oversight and Accountability Committee. Hey, Congressman, great to have you. Now, before we get to the issues, comment on the breaking news off the top there. Former Vice President Pence, his lawyers turning over classified documents he claimed he didn't have. Your thoughts? Nobody should have classified documents. A former president's going to have some, I get, because he can declassify it. I don't know why a vice president or a former senator would have classified documents. Uh, I, I am very interested to find out what his story is, what Vice President Pence's story is. But no one should. I don't even know how you get him out. Um, you know, I, we get clearance here in Congress. I don't know how you get documents out of a skiff. I imagine maybe getting it out of the vice president's office is, is easier. But why? I just do not understand why they have these there. Agreed. Congressman, I want you to comment on the war the left-wing extremists have waged on the nuclear family and our kids. What plan does the Republican Party in, in the majority now in the House have to stop all of this? Well, first of all, you're exactly right. This has been a war. It's been an all-out war, and it's been going on for more than 20 years here in the United States. It's been going on for like, uh, you know, 50 or 60 years, and it's now being accelerated. And we've got to stop it. So we need to stop everything, and we need to use it through the funding. Now, we lost some of that funding leverage. But the funding leverage would allow us to say, uh, and, and we can do this. We can go ahead and do this. Now, you can't get money. Um, you can't get federal grants to promote woke programs in schools, to promote woke programs anywhere else. You've got to stop the funding to DEI programs, diversity, equity, and, and inclusion programs, whether it's in the military or any federal program. That has got to stop. You have got to stop funding the State Department when they're giving money to fund woke, crazy programs in Ecuador about drag queen shows. The, it, it's, it's, Chris, you know this, and, and everybody needs to know this. Every institution of the United States has been taken over and, and hijacked by the left. And we in Congress we need to do all we can to fight it. And our number one, our number one tool is um, with with the with the funding. The secondary tool is with the hearings that we're going to have. Third thing, our biggest tool is the American people rising up and saying enough, no more. When when American people stand up and say we're not going to put up with this anymore, uh, they'll take action locally, and that local action will put pressure on the people, uh, their elected officials down at that end. And we in Congress, if we're putting it up with the, with the money and the, and the uh, hearings up at this end, maybe we can squeeze some of this out. In the meantime, the uh, border crises that is now co-owned by Joe Biden, the Democrats, and Mitch McConnell and John Cornyn hit a new record last month, over 250,000 illegal crossings. This, as we see, an alarming surge in drug smuggling. I had a caller on my radio show this morning. Uh, Congressman, share how he lost his son to Joe Biden's friends, Communist China, and the war they have launched against the United States using fentanyl. Take a listen. I just got the toxicology report back last Thursday, and it was heroin and fentanyl. So oh. whatever he shot had fentanyl in it. He didn't know it. He didn't have a chance, and uh, he, he died that night. This is a all-out, in my opinion, an all-out war. And the war is being waged at the southern border, and we're doing nothing about it. Congressman, doesn't this and 110 other, 110,000 other American deaths last year indict Joe Biden, the Democrats, Mitch McConnell, John Cornyn, and those 16 other Republicans who voted to prohibit border security in that omnibus vote? Yeah, it really does. The, they've got blood on their hands. Let's just admit that. It, because it isn't just, I mean, the 110,000, that is an atrocity in and of itself. But it goes more than that. It's the sex trafficking and the abuse and the torture um, that comes through the drug trade and the human smuggling and the sex trafficking trade that's coming across our border. And it isn't just 251,000 people. Those were encounters. There were at least another 100,000 people who got away into this country. Those are the ones that are bringing the drugs over, that are smuggling people over, that are bringing terrorists in, that have a criminal record. We don't know what those criminal records are. They may be murder. They're, they're gang members. They're coming across. They, they're eluding capture, and they're coming into our country. You couldn't design, uh, quite frankly, a more uh, vicious way to try to destroy a country than what the Biden administration is, do is doing. Everything from the woke policies 
um, and the educators that are indoctrinating into these woke policies and attacking the family and the fabric of our society. They attack our economy. They provide gas to the Chinese Communist Party, but we have to pay premiums for it over here. Uh, the border, all of these things go together and it's an attempt, quite frankly, to uh, destroy this nation. Study the opium wars. Congressman, thank you very much. I appreciate your time uh, on the Chris Alcedo Show today. Folks, we have much more to come.